the problem you're having with choking, with getting too nervous, and with failing in your pool game is that your body is mimicking your mind and you have to break that connection. Our bodies tend to mimic our minds, so when we're at this extreme level of concentration, we tend to tighten up and we try too hard. So when we're at this insanely high level of focus, we also stop breathing, we put too much psychological energy into our physical bodies, we hit balls too hard, we rush, and our pool game goes to hell. Now this high level of intense concentration is exactly what you need to play high level pool. But how do we break the connection between mind and body? And the first thing you should know is this is absolutely perfectly normal and it's been developed throughout the centuries of the human animal. When our minds were at this level of focus it meant danger. Get your body prepared to defend your offspring and your cave lady and the cave itself were under attack. Get ready to fight for your life. Get ready to swing. Get ready to do what you have to do to defend the little bit that you have. And today that connection is still with us between body and mind and it's interfering with our pulmon. And the result is this. this. Further complicating this issue is a very simple slip from intense concentration into fight or flight mode and some people are going to choose flight 
and running from the cave and leaving the enemy caveman to take your offspring and to eat your buffalo and to take your cave lady and, and just leave you running through the woods like a little wussy. And that option should not be an option at all. Courage is not the absence of fear, it's the refusal to let fear stand in your way. It's time to fight, but before we get to that, we have to learn to make this disconnect so our body doesn't tense up and we miss kill and we do all kinds of horrible, stupid stuff. We have to keep our bodies playing a beautiful violin while at this intense level of concentration. And this is what it's all about, and this is what the pros have learned to do. Human beings are not the biggest and strongest animal in the jungle. We don't have the sharpest claws, we don't have the sharpest teeth, and we are outmatched. The only possible way to survive is by using our brains and by outsmarting the competition. The highest achievers on the planet in every kind of profession are people who've learned to break this connection between intense focus concentration and the body. Because the minute they allow it to control their bodies is the minute they screw it all up. And lo and behold, research has proven that our minds concentrate better and at a much higher level when our bodies stay relaxed. Now, I don't know much about meditation, but I assume it's the process of relaxing both your mind and your body, which is not what I'm saying here at all. People say I'm wrong about this, but I, I really don't know what they're talking about. They, they say meditation is intense concentration while relaxing the body. I don't know. I'm going to have to look more into it. And once we learn to do that and we're concentrating at a very high level while not allowing that to affect our bodies and tensing up and miscuing and playing horrible... It feeds off itself and becomes a sort of addiction. You start thriving on this feeling. And when you see the results right in front of you on the pool table, you want nothing more than to play more pool. In a LinkedIn article, Ben Kisnatcha writes, The art of relaxed concentration unlocks the secret to winning, not trying too hard. In sports, you sometimes hear coaches tell players to ease up, to back off, to loosen their grip on the back, to let the game come to them, to remember to have fun. There's such a thing as applying too much effort. You get trapped in your head, you begin to overthink, you lose your concentration while over trying to swing the bat or shoot the ball. So while Ben is sort of on to what I'm talking about here, you can tell he's kind of guessing, and I'm not guessing. I know this place, I've been here, and I can turn it off and on at will. The issue is in teaching you how to do what I'm doing. <laughs> Will you rent like a, a apartment or something? Okay. There? Yeah, a little. Yeah, I think. 
think what I'm going to do and What if we were to do uh, a lot of just random back there beforehand? Oh, I don't think it would. That might be the key right there. Uh, but, uh, I'm getting you or Mark, and uh, whether it's me or you or him, just kind of lead the way. If you just end up getting into the pattern, there's no forehand, beforehand, three, four, five, six, seven balls, a shot, then you could almost look at my opponent, my opponent, you could almost count on him. If you get one here, I'm going to be over here on the forehand side with my back is not back ready to hit in the wrong place. Uh, or what I ended up doing a lot of was the ball was here. And I'm, I'm ending up trying to take a forehand. And, you know, or, or if I start to draw back to here, I'm going to go, or maybe I might have a shot. But it's, there you go. Yeah, I don't know if I want it. Yes. We'll give it a run out. They ain't going to go on YouTube, I can tell you. Uh, ten. That was good. Doing her job. Look at that. It's taking all that fiberglass so if I could take all this off and I might just do it. It's a very, very thin layer of fiberglass. It's like not even paper thin. It's very thin. So, I mean, if you wanted a wooden shaft, now you got it. Fiberglass is supposed to uh, resist dings and keep it straight. And yeah, you definitely need a straight shaft, but I'm not real happy with the white, the whiteness. That's about as cleaned up. Is that Farrell's gonna get? And tip is shaped. It could probably use a little bit more, but I'm happy with it for now. I'll keep it shaped and I'll see what happens. And then there's a real state of being where your mind and your body are just two different things. One's intense, one's relaxed. So each time you see me missing in this video, I know that I failed to keep those two things separated. And also, each time that happens, it's the end of the world to me. It's absolutely 100% devastating. And here we get the pain pleasure principle. Although I don't show it each time I run out flawlessly, I'm at an incredible amount of pleasure to getting it right, to doing it right, and to keeping those two things separated. So all of this is to say it takes practice, intense practice. But when you go to the pool table, don't just knock balls around. Play nine ball and play like you're playing in the International Open, in the finals of the International Open, against Josh Filler, or, or one of the best players in the world. You have to practice. Like, so it's more than just losing a game. It's, it's losing your dreams, losing your bankroll, losing your woman, losing your house, losing everything. And every time you run a wreck, associate it with winning the lottery, getting all your dreams coming true, being able to travel the world for the rest of your life, 
and drink as much beer as your belly can handle. But the key in all of it is to understand exactly what went wrong when you screw it up and what went right when you succeed. And you're soon going to find out that this was the whole key in keeping your brain from screwing up your body. Yeah, this is marvelous, marvelous.